Hi, my name is Mike. I'm a respiratory therapist and today we're going to talk about high flow oxygen delivery systems. Now, respiratory therapists can divide oxygen into two categories as it relates to just typical oxygen devices. Low flow oxygen is typically one that is uh, in liters per minute. It's not an exact FiO2. It doesn't provide all of the patient's minute ventilation. It has a variable FiO2 depending on the patient's inspiratory flow, breathing pattern, respiratory rate, and tidal volume. In other words, the more the patient breathes in around the oxygen, in addition to the oxygen that's being delivered, the lower the FiO2. The less room air that's pulled in around the oxygen being delivered, the higher the FiO2 is. Whereas high flow systems are very specific, they provide all of the patient's minute ventilation, and they're given in FiO2, because you can guarantee a precise FiO2. So Here's a chart summary of the technical differences between low flow and high flow oxygen delivery systems. You can go ahead and hit pause on your video if you want to take a minute to study it. Okay, having said all that, now we're going to talk about just nasal cannula systems that we sometimes call high flow systems. They don't really fit the definition of high flow, low flow like I uh, just explained to you, which can be a little bit confusing. So first of all, we have a, a standard nasal cannula and those can typically be run up to six liters a minute and if you need to go higher than six liters a minute on a nasal cannula, they do make, uh, it's a green, it looks like a nasal cannula, but it can handle higher flows. So we'll, we'll call that a high flow nasal cannula, meaning that you can run it at a higher flow than a standard nasal cannula, but it doesn't fit our definition of a high flow system where you can deliver a specific FiO2. I know that gets a little confusing, but you just kind of have to accept it for what it okay. is. Then we have, uh, this is uh, a reservoir cannula. This is an oxymizer, and there's different ones out there. Um, and what this is was originally designed for was for an to be an oxygen conserving device because you can get uh, similar FiO2s out of it using lower flows. So it was great for home care. But you can run these at higher levels too. So we'll, sometimes you'll hear people call this, you know, a high higher flow cannula not really proper terminology, but uh, again, compared to the standard cannula, you can run it at higher flows. All right, then we get to what we're gonna be talking about today, and that is a high flow nasal cannula system. Now this one really gets, it's called a high flow nasal cannula system because it can really run at high flows, really high flows. In fact, this flow meter goes up to 70 liters per minute. Okay, to set this up, we're gonna Go ahead and plug it in, and you want to plug it into a red plug. In case the power goes out, it'll run off the backup generator. And we're going to plug our oxygen 50 psi line in. That's normal. That's just the blender. All right. Now this oxygen and air go into this blender so we can dial in right here a specific FiO2 from room air all the way up to 100%. So we have two settings on here, a uh, flow setting and an FiO2 setting. And we can, the more flow, the more pressure gets built. If you uh, have learned anything about CPAP or PEEP uh, or EPAP, that creates a baseline pressure and so this will too. It has been said that for every 10 liters a minute of flow, patient gets approximately one centimeter water pressure of end expiratory pressure or CPAP. So because this is so much dry gas, we need to humidify it. So I have a heated Passover humidifier here and I'm not gonna spike the bag on this cause we're in a, a water shortage right now. So normally though, we would use this sterile water, we'd hang it and we would go ahead and spike the bag and that would drain into our water chamber on our heated Passover humidifier. So we're gonna go from our outlet here down to our humidifier. Doesn't matter which port on the water chamber you use. And we have a single limb circuit. So what's gonna happen is 
it's going to blow the air over the oxygen over the heat heated uh, water here and then deliver it to the patient this actually does have a heated wire in it because we want to keep it super humidified so we do need a temperature probe we're going to measure temperature at the distal port there and we'll go ahead and put this temperature probe at this end and then we need to plug in our heated wire so that it gets hot just plug that right in there and now we're ready to go so we can go ahead and hook up a system here now I have medium prongs. They come in different sizes. Uh, medium's good for a lot of people. They do have uh, sizing charts that you can use or you can just kind of eyeball it. But you basically want these prongs to be the same width as the nares on your patient. So this is really simple. Just plugs in the end here. And we always turn things on before we put them on people's faces. So I'm gonna start out at 30 liters a minute. It's a pretty decent your flow of course be all according to your needs the patient's needs this is for oxygenation it's a really great oxygenation device when non rebreather or, or 100 percent on a different device isn't quite getting it and we need to deliver that and we can have that little bit of added flow which builds a little bit of uh, CPAP pressure to help oxygenate keep the airways open things like that so that's a that's a good thing we can also use this uh, a little bit alternating with a non-invasive system, the, the, you know, the mask bi-level system. Uh, we can, if that's not tolerated, you can use this. You can switch back and forth, things like that. Sometimes patients thrive better on one over the other. Um, there are studies that show each device has its advantages and disadvantages in certain patient populations. I won't go through all those here, but one thing that's interesting about the high flow nasal cannula system is that it does not push gas in, so it doesn't ventilate it. It's not a CO2 remover like the bi-level would be or a ventilator, but having said that, it can wash a little bit of CO2 out of the oropharynx and the nasopharynx. So if you think about it, when we exhale, the last breath that's at the end of the at the end of our exhalation, what's sitting in there is CO2 that's came up from the alveoli. And when you breathe back in, that CO2 rich gas that's sitting in your oro and nasopharynx is the first to go down, first to be rebreathed, followed by the fresh you know, gas coming in after that. This system has so much flow going through it that it is said that it will actually blow the CO2 out of that reservoir system and can help with removal of CO2 a little bit, which is why you can interchange it with the, the bi-level within limits to some degree. Okay, so this is really simple and we'll go ahead and fit this to our patient and put it on. If we need to set an FiO2, which we would, just turn the dial here and I'll just set it on 80% just to pick something. So now we have a flow and an FiO2. So if you need to increase the patient's oxygen level, you can do either. You can increase the FiO2 or you can increase the flow and then we can take it back down as they get better. Okay, so we have our system set up, all plugged in, gas and electric. We've got our flow set, we've got our FiO2 set. And I'm here with Topanga and she's agreed to let me put this on her. And so we have these prongs that they come in different sizes and they have sizing charts you can use, or this is pretty easy to eyeball, but you can just make sure that the two prongs are gonna fit in the nares and not be too wide or too narrow. They are curved, so they, the curve goes down and then it has an elastic strap that just goes over the head. Now, we, if she were laying down in the bed, this is on the proper side for this hose to come toward it. If it were flipped to the other side, because sometimes you don't have a choice as to which side of the bed your machine is on. And so if 
if this were flipped to the other side, it would pull and we could just pop this hose out, flip it around, and it would come in from the other side so that it didn't pull. This has got some weight to it. So uh, it does tend to pull a little bit. And so they do provide this little clip that you put on the large bore tubing. And you can see there, you can clip that to the pillow or a bed sheet or something like that to keep it from pulling. Because once this comes out, then they lose their, their pressure that has been built by the um, extra flow. Okay, you ready? Yep. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and put this over her head and in her nose. Now we have her on a flow of 30, which is not a whole lot. Is that tickle? No, no it's good. It is? Okay, yeah. Good. And you can see where this is kind of pulling. So if she were laying down, I would go ahead and clip this to a sheet or something like that. You feel that pull yeah. a little bit, don't you? Okay, and it's already starting to come out a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna crank the flow up a little bit. And we'll put you on a flow of 50. Is that, is that a lot of flow? Yeah, yeah. very. Can you, feel, can you feel it coming out your mouth? Yeah. Okay, close your mouth. You feel the pressure building up a little bit in there? Okay, so that's what we want. All right. So that is how we apply it to a patient.